Hi, this is Ryan with Butter Tattooing, and today we're going to be talking about some art stuff. Let's talk about the circle of creation in tattooing. Oh. All right, now that that's over with, I bet you weren't expecting that thing that my face did, but I did it. Uh, so. I'm putting up a post on social media and I sent this out to uh, a couple people I know just to see what they had thought, just based on the slides I had created. And they said, I think you need to make a video because this is a lot. I said, okay. So here we are, we're out here doing this. Let me give you a little background. Uh, I do classes uh, that deal with just art and creation and tattooing every Wednesday. Uh, and this week we were talking about how to approach designs based on, on like what the, the topic or the subject matter, or the empathy of the design was. And so we started getting into the, the, the origin point of when you're creating your artwork and how it influences the outcome. So the idea is, is that if you have a design, depending on where you start within it, it'll influence the outcome just just because like your brain is looking at the image differently right if it's top down bottom up inside out whatever and i'm not talking about light sources it's just how you're filling it and like most of us in tattooing have always been told you start with your line work <clears throat> and then you start going through everything until you end at your highlights right and you always work dark to light etc cetera, etc cetera. and in in my years of doing this i see so many people not doing that and their tattoos turned out fine. And so I'm, one, I was wondering why the hell this came about and why it was, you know, the way it was. And two, if this has become such a dogmatic response from the industry and how to do a tattoo, is it limiting people and their approach? So we decided just to go to the arts. Simple homework, which we have homework every week with this class as well. We just come in, we got one design, and this week's homework was you have to start at each one of these points, right? The fill pack, sculpting, highlights or drop lights, line work, solid black, and shading. That's where you start your design. So we're going to have six different variations of the same base like idea, which it was a sacred heart, really simple, right? And you have to have a break in between each one, 15 to 20 minutes till you get it done. Uh, so it has to be a quick sketch. And then at the end of it, we were going to look at what the designs look like side by side, right? To see if they all looked the same. And realistically, if the process doesn't matter, the hypothesis is that you'll have the same result, right? And if we're nulling that, then we're gonna say, no, there's gonna be a different result. So I am confident because we've done this. But this works. It changes how your brain works with this stuff. Um, I'd have to talk to people smarter than I to understand why this occurs. But as of right now, it does. So you should try it at home. But let's let's go over what this is first, why it works, and how you can use it with your tattooing to improve, well, I don't know, the speed of your creation. Remember to like, subscribe, and if you want to show support for the show, check out the video description for a link to our Buy Me A Coffee website thing. We appreciate any and all support that you've given us so far, and hopefully we'll continue to in the future. All right, artistic circle of creation is really simple. All we do is pie shape here. You can fill these in with any spot, right? If we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, you start at any one of these wedges, which I have on my social media, a color-coded one that's a little bit easier to see instead of a whiteboard with some glare in a garage during an ice storm. Yeah, it's nice out. <laughs> um, all you do is you start at one of these points inside there, and you can work in either direction, but you can't bounce back and forth and you work in either direction around until completion of the design. <clears throat> you can start between two points if you would like, if sometimes those designs are better leading towards it, but regardless, whatever space that you go and you start working, you work through that design that way. Now, <clears throat> this will influence how you have, uh, what your result will be, right? Because let's say that you start with a sacred heart and we start in with just the solid black, not even the line work, just mapping it in. We're calibrating our brain to see the darkest spots right now. And that's what we're gonna be building up off of because we set our base. Usually when we start with solid blacks inside of a design, the designs start to look much darker than they would normally. If you were to just start with something else, let's say with the highlights, which would be the inverse. 
you're doing the same design in different ways, the outcome is going to be opposite. I have tested this with numerous people, and if we start with just mid-tone mapping, just mid-tone, we start with the shading, and we fill our way straight through. Fill in, we do shading, the fill pack, sculpting highlights, line work, and then solid black last. The design actually is much lighter than starting with the solid black and working in the opposite direction. This is because your brain is trying to fill in those spaces and create the illusion of depth. And when you start with something that's very, very dark, your natural ability is to try and cover more with it, right? I don't know why that occurs, but everything I have ever seen has shown me that. <clears throat> Once again, got to talk to smarter people than me about this, but it works. <laughs> so how do we start applying these things or dictating, you know, what, what is best like stylistically to approach or like what step would be best to apply stylish stylistically to a type of tattoo that you're doing. And all we have to do is just look at some very, very prolific tattooers out there and pull apart how they create things and just up look at this because it maps it out, right? Like we have Guy Aitchison. If you don't know who Guy is, phenomenal educator tattooer, uh, you know, a literal walking god amongst tattooers. He's more responsible for tattoo education in the past 20 years than anyone ever has been. I mean, kudos to him. Without his book, I probably never would have started to ask questions about tattooing myself. And we look at tattooing very differently. Like he is extremely art centric, but it doesn't mean he doesn't apply science to his stuff. And I'm kind of the inverse. I really like the science of things, but I, you, you cannot deny the art inside of this. It's a collaborative experience inside of tattooing. <clears throat> but when Guy does his large-scale biomech work, he doesn't start by mapping everything out with line work. He'll start with markers, and then he comes in with either shading or the fill pack, depending on the type of design that he's going, if he's going to be making it dark or light. And he'll work inversely off these things, right? Shading the solid black line work, highlight, sculpting, and then fill pack at the end is for one that's going to have a lot of contrast in the dark front versus a light back. Inversely, starting with the shading or fill pack and working backwards through this, you're going to have the inverse where you have many 3D images that are pulling off of the skin instead of being settled in. So this is really, really easy to see. Go see a video of him. He'll start with a 5 mag, which is uses it kind of like whip shading a liner and fills an entire section of the body in a really quick amount of time. <laughs> and he'll wait for the solid black usually for last because that's when you know when you want to put in that depth, right? In this section or in the whole tattoo. It's beautiful. So if we move off biomech and we start getting into people like new school artists who are out there, they're going to be starting with, right? Either line work or their sculpted lines to fill in. Some of them I've even seen will start with their fill and pack. If they're going to come in and totally map in a big block of color, they'll wait to refine those edges on stuff until the very end. And why do they do this? When they start with either this or this, but they end once again with solid black, uh, sometimes I can start with solid black. Anyways, it depends on the design. <clears throat> when you're working through, you're trying to think about the tones that you want to settle in the skin the most and which ones that you want to appear the most vibrant when the work is done. By finishing with black, either the line work or, or the solid black, you're ensuring that, that that deepest tone is gonna be the strongest showing on the skin. Not only does it provide better photographs if you use social media to post your work, but if the tattoo has taken multiple sittings and you leave that till the very end, you've ensured that the color and other things that are being applied to the body in the first section are allowed to age more effectively than they do uh, if you were to do all of the same things at the same time, right? So like we have a light blue that we start with and we know is gonna fade given the person's you know, skin tone, their lifestyle, etc. And we go in and put a black next to it 18 months later, that blue is actually gonna become more apparent because we have an additional contrast value next to it that's apart from their skin. But the black is gonna be screaming dark. So you can utilize that to pull things forward or back on a longer timeline, which is really important when you're trying to think about longevity of tattoos and how legible they are at a distance. <clears throat> now, many people I've talked to so far, they're like, who starts with highlights? And I'll tell you who, hyper-realism would start with this. <laughs> Something you know you're going to have multiple sittings coming back into and you really need to establish those very, very bright colors or even the drop lights that are going to go around behind it, like graffiti artist type work. You want to establish that first. So you'll put that in, it'll help keep your shapes and you have a guide point to go off of when you start working that more complex aspects of your stencil. And given the chance to go over those spots three, four, five times, depending on how big the piece is, you're gonna ensure that the saturation values of them long-term are gonna be greater because you're really able to just cram those, those colors into the skin and make sure that they show up. So 
that it, it, most people would be like, well, it won't apply to me. Well, if you try to create or differently, it may. But these are all legitimate starting points from people all over the world. So if you are just one of those, you know, it's duh. I'm not saying you're wrong, right? You can start with your line work, go to solid black and shading fill pack and the highlights down. It's totally fine. It's on the board. I'm just saying it's not the only way. So <laughs> hopefully this makes sense. If you want to find out more, I'll see if I'll post this on the community tab and you can go check out my social media. It'll have it more mapped out about how to, how to work your way through this and at least something that you can read a little bit easier. Uh, and if you want to, let me know in the comments if anyone wants to do the classes. Uh, we're either thinking about making the videos of the classes open for members only, uh, having an open invite if you want to. It's a pay what you want. You don't have to pay anything or you can give me a donation if you want to come to the class. It's totally fine. And you can just come in and learn more about art. That's what we focus on there. Uh, there's homework and everything. Any disruptors though, if you come in and you're just being an asshole, I'm going to ban you and uh, I'm not going to feel bad about it. So. <laughs> This is, this is for legitimate people who just want to try things a bit different. And we've been trying these classes with experienced artists or new ones alike, and people seem to like it. So anyways, push that. Uh, and if you want to buy a shirt or a hat or something, let me know if the quality on those things you bought was any good. Because everyone's always bitching about drop shippers, and I, I do print on demand, so I don't know if the stuff's good or not. I have a couple of my sweaters. I think they're swell, but I bought them a while ago. That's it. Uh, Thanks for watching. We hope this makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments, and we'll talk to you next time. This is Ryan, Better Tattoo, and signing off.